Hey students, welcome to this video on test taking skills. Uh, the key thing that we're asking is what are they good for? Uh, and I'm here to tell you they're pretty much just good for test stuff. But just as a baseline, here's some things that are going to be useful for you this year in particular as we're online. Um, first of all, you're going to want to designate a quiet place and tell all the other folks in your area like when you have a quiz and or a test so that you don't get interrupted and doesn't mess with you there. You want to put all of your other devices on silent, close everything else on your computer, and then once you have like a clean computer situation, you just open that one single tab on Chrome and go to whichever testing software or website that you need to go to. Uh, make sure to check the power level on your computer so that you don't lose all of your work in the middle of it. Uh, that would be a nightmare. Okay, issue two. Uh, we are gonna be taking a pretest here at the beginning of the year and the key question is, but what are they for? Um, they're not for your grades. Uh, the grade on this pretest that you're gonna get is based on your reflections on whether or not your predictions about what you were gonna know and be able to do were accurate. Uh, for me as your teacher, it is so that I can see at a macro, like big picture level, um, which areas are all of my classes strong in, weak in, where you need to grow. And you get a kind of fuzzy picture of your strengths and weaknesses and where you can grow. But generally, unless you're taking a really expansive test, you're not gonna get a very good picture just as an individual. But you'll get a sense of what sorts of things stuck out to you and maybe even recognize some of the formats of questions. That is worthwhile. So here is the third issue and what we're going to spend the most time on in this video, which is what actually matters for you being successful on one of these SOL tests that you have to take. And you will be taking a fair number of them in your life, I imagine, unless we get rid of them, which like, I don't know, maybe it's a possibility, who knows. But number one is just reading skills. And that is why I have that meme over there. Just the, wait, what? You already take a reading SOL test, so why are you basically just being tested on reading again for these history SOL tests? Uh, because it's really hard to do history stuff without the reading stuff, A. And B, they're still not very good at making these tests, honestly. So mostly you can figure out the answers to a bunch of the questions, maybe even a passing level of questions, just by having really solid reading skills. And I'll show you what those all mean in a minute. But then take a look at this order. The most important being the top there, and the, honestly, the least important being the bottom. And it hurts my heart to say this, but history skills are actually the least common things to see as things you would need to do in order to be successful on a, a standardized multiple choice test. But it's true, and you'll see why in a second. Note, this matters on multiple choice tests specifically. Real work in history, like what we will be doing for the vast majority of the year, is very, very different. And that order of things would be entirely different. So here's some examples of reading skills. Now, you can see here is a quote from Pericles at a funeral. And if you read that, you can pause here to read that. But if you read that, then you come down here to the question. It says, in this quotation, Pericles describes Athenian society as valuing no, they're really just asking you to understand literally the words coming out of his mouth. You don't need to know who Pericles is, really. You hardly need to know what a funeral is. You really just need to know what these words generally mean. And you can pick that out just by decoding some of the language in here. It's just reading skills. You, don't, you hardly need to know the history. Anyway, it bothers me. Then down here. Which statement best supports the conclusion that the Indus Valley civilization had a centralized government? Do you need to know what the Indus Valley civilization was to answer this question? No, you don't at all. It is a red herring. It is there to distract you. <laughs> so what all you need to know here is just kind of what the word centralized means. And if you're a strong reader, you can pick that word apart if you don't already know what it means. So which statement best supports the conclusion, as long as you're closely reading for what they're actually asking you? And when I say reading, I mean literally trying to understand what they're actually asking you verbally. And then just picking apart that word, you can already see like, well, farms produced annual crop surpluses. That doesn't, I mean, maybe, maybe a government that's really centralized could do that. Like goods imported from coastal cities, maybe, but like individual people could do that. Houses constructed with bricks, uh, no, not so much. Like, I don't know that you need a huge government to do that. And then cities had an organized pattern of streets, centralized government, planning, organized pattern of streets. It's, it's really just reading skills and they are 
it is masquerading as a history question. And if you knew a bunch about the Indus Valley civilization, you could answer that question correctly based on your knowledge. But you don't need it. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons that uh, it's not always the people who know the most history who do the best on these tests. In fact, it's really just the people who are good at the reading part. So, then... The next most important thing, and I really think both of these would get you to 80% if you were good at both of these things. You'd at least be getting like 80% of the questions right consistently, um, which is the test taking skills that you can apply here. So for example, down here, this picture. When studying prehistoric people, cave drawings like this one allow archeologists to, so it's worth knowing what an archeologist does generally. Um, prehistoric people, cave drawings, it's worth-ish knowing what those are, but honestly, what does this picture allow you to do? Is speculate about people's daily lives, understand spoken languages, interpret written records, or study farming techniques? So like, what does this let you do? Test taking skill. Does this let you interpret a written record? Is this a written record? No. Is this a spoken language? No, it's clearly you also need some reading skills here. That's always goes hand in hand with the test taking skills. Um, study farming techniques, maybe, but here's where the test taking skill comes into use. What you have to ask is, why are they asking this? Why are they asking me this question? Why did they decide to put this picture in here? You have to put yourself in the mindset of a person making a test. If I was a test maker and I was putting this in there, the reason I'm putting that in there is because I want to ask you about like cave paintings and cave people and the real old stuff and see if you know it. Um, and I also noticed archaeologists in here. So it's really talking about like us looking back at this stuff. So they probably want me to talk about speculating about daily lives because it's real old stuff. And honestly, they're asking about the old stuff and we don't know very much about the old stuff because we don't have a lot of evidence. So this test maker is probably asking me about the fact that with old stuff, you kind of have to speculate. So is that historical knowledge and knowledge of history as a discipline? Kind of. But honestly, even if you barely knew how history worked, you could still answer that right just by eliminating those two answers and then putting yourself in the mindset of the person who's making this test. The second example over here, ancient Hebrews were among the first to develop a religious tradition that included sacrifices, ancestor worship, holy pilgrimage, or monotheism. Now, again, why are they asking me this question? And for this one, it's really useful. Where is this information in the standards? Like, you don't, you, it is really helpful to you if what you can know offhand is not just like who the Hebrews were, but specifically, why are they included in this curriculum? Why do we study them at all? Like for the ancient Egyptians, why are they important? For the ancient uh, Sumerians, why are they important? Like, why? Do we include them as the required material that all people your age have to study? Like, that's the kind of question that shows up on the test. So it isn't even really knowledge of history so much as knowledge of what people think is important history now, which is, it's weird. So if you're a test maker, that's the kind of question you're asking because the standards are built that way. So as a student, if you want to do well in these multiple choice tests, knowing history is useful. But knowing the standards, literally the standards and how they're built is actually more important, which means if we wanted to just have everybody pass the test as high numbered as possible, then what we would study is the standards and not the history, which would kill my soul and we will not be doing it. But you could. And as an individual student, you could study that way. I might even provide you with some materials to do that. So what you want to ask yourself basically is not what is do you think is the right answer? But what answer do you think the test makers wanted you to see as right here? It's a mental shift that you have to do, but I'm telling you right now, this would help you with the SAT. This would help you for literally any test you take in your entire life. They're made by humans and humans have agendas and goals. And if you can get inside their head, you can destroy the test from the inside out. And it's a lot more satisfying to take them then. It's one of my favorite memes. Okay, so historical knowledge, this is right in the middle because if you can jam your head full of historical knowledge, it is useful on the test because then you can just kind of associate two words together and answer a question in like half a second. So here's a good example of that. This is an actual, all of these are actual questions from SOL tests. Which text is a central document of Judaism? This is hard to answer if you have no idea. There aren't a lot of skills that you can use here. You might be able to eliminate some if you recognize those other ones as connected to other things. But even in that case, it's all historical knowledge. So really, it's just Judaism, Torah, boom. 
there's your answer. It's which text. It, this is a basically association question. And there's so many of those on these tests. Um, it's real simple. So how do you study for that? There's lots of ways to do this. Historical knowledge is best learned through uh, building really rich understandings of things and like attaching knowledge to sort of central core ideas. But then before the test, you can jam your head through a lot, of, like full of a, not a lot of knowledge and uh, there's techniques for doing that and then you'll do fine on these tests. But it's not useful for you in the long run. That's how all this test taking skill stuff works. Um, so over here, visual familiarity. If this is like information familiarity, essentially, this is visual familiarity. So look over here. You got a big old bird. You got a, I, you know, slug or snake. I'd, I'd take arguments. Probably slug, right? Because I don't know that snakes have horns. Um, and then what is this? What the heck is that? That's an excellent question. When you nearly recognize something. If you had studied ancient Egypt much, you would know that that is one of the crowns of Egypt. <laughs> But you need to know that, because otherwise, like, lots of cultures have both of these animals in them. And why are there letters there? Uh, maybe, like, oh, is it Chinese characters? Phoenician alphabet? There are letters there. Egyptian hieroglyphics? Sumerian cuneiform? I don't know. If you recognize it, you're good. If you don't recognize it, you messed up today. <laughs> so it's only easy. If you intentionally get familiar with visual stuff all year and when you study for tests, study visual material in the same way you would study written material. Both are texts that you have to understand and associate and become familiar with. But again, I might, I, maybe I should even rate this higher on this list because these come up an astounding amount. And this also, this is relevant for like looking at a map and just recognizing a landmass. Yeah, I might, I might rate this higher in the future if I do this again. Ugh. So you just have to study this way. You just have to know it. Again, there are rich and beautiful ways of learning this, but there are also underhanded and real quick ways of doing this. So mm, that's why multiple choice tests are terrible. Now, the last one on here, and what we spend the most of the year on, because it's useful to you in your real and actual lives, um, are these historical skills. So this one is a cause and effect thing. It's useful in your life to have a really clear grasp of cause and effect or else you will be making poor decisions about stuff that matters, whether it's about money or voting or whatever. Um, here you see movable type printing presses leading to, like causing something, which then causes the spread of ideas. And it says, which best completes this diagram? The construction of monasteries the development of guilds, the growth of universities, or the production of books. So it takes a little bit of history knowledge. But then honestly, what does a printing press lead to down there? Maybe you could say so, like a growth of universities because they have books. Oops, wait, hold on. Yeah, wait, because they have books, the production of books, right? It's really simple, but it can be tricky if you are not familiar with thinking with that, like that kind of clear linear cause and effect way, but that's an actual useful history skill. And it does show up. I had to really dig to find this question. So it shows up uh, disturbingly rarely, and you technically don't need to be able to do that to be successful on an SOL test, which I, I it pains me to say this. Um, and then over here, which factor was most important about the site of Constantinople? Um, so again, this is about critical thinking like you're doing in the unit uh, that we're about to jump into where it's thinking like, okay, if I lived in this time period, what sorts of decisions, decisions would I make about the resources that I have and what I needed to do, like what's important to me? So try to put yourself in other people's shoes. That's a historical skill. That shows up sometimes. Again, I had to dig for this one. Uh, so here's the issue. In multiple choice tests, it's really hard to design any sorts of historical skill questions because these multiple choice questions are necessarily really out of context. And almost every historical skill requires you to think in context. And if they want to keep these tests to a reasonable length, they can't have you jumping from context to context. And in order to cover the whole year's worth of material, they have to have you jumping from context to context. So there just won't be that many questions on it. But in our class this year, we're gonna do a lot of this kind of work because by doing this, you'll also gain a bunch of those other skills. So I will tell you that they are working real hard to design tests that 
you know, test for more of this stuff, but at least for this year and likely in the future, because I don't know how they get out of this problem, you will probably see very similar kinds of questions and encounter the same kinds of tests that you can use these tricks of the trade to get through. Uh, you'll have an opportunity if you want to this year to work with me uh, in more depth about these test taking skills and ways to destroy tests from the inside out. Um, but for now, I'm going to sign off so that you can get to other stuff in your life. Bye-bye.